Whether you're just starting out with leather tooling, let's say you bought your first beginner kit, or maybe you've been at it for a little bit and you're just struggling to get consistent results, I'm gonna give you three very simple tips that should improve your leather tooling instantly. The first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is going to be pattern design or pattern layout. When you're first starting out, I know it can be very intimidating to even think about coming up with your own designs or learning how to draw different patterns, and that's a completely different topic that I'll save for a future video. But regardless of what type of patterns you're tooling out, something that you quickly realize as you start to practice more and develop your skills is that the more you can match your tools to the designs that you're tooling, the more efficient you're going to be and the more consistent your results will be. So tip number one is going to be match your tools to the designs you're going to be tooling as best as you can. I know when you're first starting out that can be very hard, especially if you're working out of a beginner kit, then you're going to be very limited to very limited to the types of tools that you have and the amount of tools that you have. But as you start to expand your tool role and potentially invest in higher quality tools, it's very important to understand which tools you need for the type of patterns that you intend on tooling. Especially when you start investing in higher quality tools, these are Berry King tools for an example. They can get very pricey very fast. On average, they're usually anywhere from $30 to $55 a piece. So the last thing you want to do is go buy a bunch of tools and then find out when you get them that they don't actually work for the type of designs that you are used to tooling. Most toolers over time will start to develop their own style and stick to certain designs like really intricate small patterns or they might draw floral patterns with larger elements like this or different geometric styles. Uh, tooling can vary a lot. But you'll notice that once you start to develop your own style and start working on consistent patterns, people will start to invest in tools that specifically fit those patterns. So if you're working on a project like this, for an example, these elements are a lot larger, these lines are longer, so it's a lot smarter to use a beveler that's wider compared to a small beveler. This wider beveler is meant to cover a larger area when you're tooling, and that's going to not only help you get through that project faster, but also keep those impressions more consistent and not look as choppy throughout the process. The same thing goes for working on smaller and intricate patterns. If you're working on something very small like this where there's a lot of action going on, you don't want to just have this ginormous flower center or this massive thumbprint trying to work in all these small areas. It's going to be a lot more efficient to use a smaller beveler or smaller tools that are meant to fit in these tiny areas, small shaders, and just make your tools match the designs. Now obviously once you start expanding your tool role and you're able to invest in a variety of different tools and different sizes, you don't have to be as strict with how you go about tooling designs, but when you're first starting out and you're limited to the amount of tools you have or the types of tools you have, it can be really important to learn how to match your tools to your work, not only to become more efficient at tooling, but to continuously replicate good results. Another very important component to tooling leather and getting good consistent results is moisture content in the leather. So obviously when we go to carve and tool leather, we want to make sure that it has moisture in it so it's able to accept cuts and impressions, but you don't want there to be too much moisture in it and you don't want it to be too dry either. When it comes to wetting and casing leather, there's a few ways to go about it, especially depending on the type of projects that you're working on. But when you're working with smaller items like this, I will usually do what most people call quick casing. So you can usually just take a sponge or I prefer to use a spray bottle and I will wet this leather down but once you wet it down you don't want to immediately start carving and tooling on it you want that leather to for an example I'll spray this down and you can see it will start to absorb that moisture you want to let that set there for a little bit and let that come back to its natural resting color like this before you start carving and tooling on it if it's too wet then it's not your swivel knife might make too deep or inconsistent cuts and your tools are going to do more of a mash effect instead of leaving those crisp impressions like they're supposed to do. So you want to make sure after you wet your leather you're letting it have plenty of time to actually soak that up and become prepared. This wouldn't be considered a full casing like if you were working on a large saddle fender or something like that but a quick case like this is perfect for when you're working on small items like this and it works just fine. One other thing you can do if you got time or if you're wanting to stop on a project but you don't want it to lose its casing is you can put it in a little Ziploc bag like this or if you're working on a larger item you can put them in a trash bag something that is airtight and that will prevent oxygen from drying that out so as you can see here I have three different pieces of leather that are all different moisture contents this one right here is more of a natural color but you can still see it has a little bit of moisture in it this is what I would consider cased up and ready to start working on this centerpiece right here is almost bone dry looking it has hardly any moisture in it it's going to be a lot harder to carve and tool on it your tools just will not work very good on it and I'll show you that here in a second and then as you can see here this piece of leather is really dark it's completely saturated I'm going to show you what it looks like to carve and tool on completely saturated leather as well so let's start off with this dry leather it was misted down with a little bit of water earlier but it's almost completely dried out this would be almost what I would consider way too dry to work with 
I'm just going to show you for an example what it's like to try and carve on leather when it's too dry. I'll just make a straight line right here. Do some squigglies. So the knife will still cut, but the cuts are not very deep at all. And I don't know if you could hear it on camera, but the knife almost drags. You can hear it dragging as it goes through the leather. And now if you were to take a bevel and try to tool on this while it's completely dry, you can almost hear that it's so dry that the tool doesn't even hardly want to make an impression. And you can see it's hard to stay on line with that because it is so dry. And yeah, this is an extra steep beveler and it's barely making any bit of an impression. I'll try to set a flower center in this too. I messed that up a little bit, but you can see it barely wanted to even accept that flower center. So this is completely dried out. I would not recommend carving and tooling on this. And this piece right here has just the right amount of moisture in it. I've already carved this out, but I'll show you just how easy it is for the knife to cut on it when it is properly cased up. It's a lot easier to get that knife deeper into the leather and fade it out. It's a lot more smooth. And then I'll try to set this flower center on this. That took a way better impression of that flower center. It's a lot more crisp and dark. It left a little bit of that burnished look on the outside of it. And now let's take this beveler and start working down one of these lines. Hard to work with the camera in front of my face so I apologize but as you can see it's a lot easier to get that nice color out of your tools and a lot more crisp and deliberate impression with it when it is properly cased up and now really quickly let's talk about this piece that has just recently been wet down it hasn't had hardly any time to let that moisture set up in the leather this is something that I personally struggled with when I first started tooling leather I never let my leather properly case up I would always just mist it down and then go right into carving and tooling and I didn't learn until a little time of practicing that I needed to let that moisture set up a little bit longer than I was letting it. When it's completely wet like this and you go to carve, your knife really wants to sink into that leather and carve almost too deep. And if you're working on a thinner piece of leather, then that could be dangerous because you could risk going through the leather when you start tooling on it. But it's going to be a lot harder to control your knife. Your cuts are going to be a lot more inconsistent. And then it even wants to drag like it was on that dry piece of leather as well. You can almost feel it dragging more because it is cutting so deep into that leather. And instead of getting a nice clean cut, it almost wants to start caving in on itself as well. And then when you go to take your tools and tool on it, your tools will start to go very, very deep too. And it can also start to cause almost a mushroom effect. It might be hard to see on camera, but if you start going too deep with your tools, then the lines will almost want to start caving in on their self as well. Tooling on too wet of leather is something that you can get away with. Sometimes it isn't that too big of a deal, but you risk almost keeping your overall pattern looking too deep. There's not going to be much flow in it. It's going, when you tool on too wet of leather, it can eliminate you being able to fade out a line and letting that line like usually when you're beveling and a line starts to fade out like that, you want to fade out your beveling as well. And when you're tooling on too wet of leather, it can be hard to control that. This was a piece of nine to 10 ounce veg tan leather. So it probably wasn't the best piece to use for this example. Since it is so thick, it isn't going to cause as much damage. But if you're working with thinner leather, like four to five ounce or maybe even five to six ounce, and you start carving and tooling on too wet of the leather, then you're going to start to see those impressions show up on the backside. And it could cause a lot more stretch in the leather and potentially deform it some. Here's another view of some impressions on this properly cased piece. It might be hard to see because this piece is so small and I'm sorry about that. But you can see the nice burnished color that you get out of your tool marks when the leather is properly cased. And the beveling, again, it's hard to see, but you get a lot more consistent lines and impressions. And it just, your tools work a lot better on properly cased leather. So tip number two, always make sure that you do have the right amount of moisture content in your leather when you're tooling on it. Some of you may or may not like this, but the third and final tip I have for this video is to just slow down. As counterintuitive as it sounds, you have to slow down in order to speed up and get better and get faster. You have to be willing to practice, know what it feels like to hold those tools in your hand. You gotta learn 
how much pressure you need to hit those tools with in order to leave the impressions you like, learn how to maneuver those tools. You have to build that muscle memory and train your eye to know which tool you need to grab next. It's a long process. All of leather craft, especially tooling leather, it's not quick and learning it isn't any quicker. I promise you that. I'm not satisfied with the work I do and, and how I tool. It's a constant battle of continuously sitting down and practicing and being willing to learn and grow. Even if you're just getting 1% better, every time you get the chance, just try to work at it because it doesn't happen overnight. I know what it's like to sit down and look at social media and see all these people that are just doing amazing work and tooling stuff out like that and it just looks beautiful and perfect. And, and to sit there and compare yourself to them, you can't compare yourself to everybody else. You have to just focus on your own journey with it and practice at it and get better. And, and I don't think you can ever become satisfied with the work you do. Like I said, you have to be willing to continuously grow and get better, but, but I believe if you sit down and work at it consistently, then you can get to a point where you're confident in your tooling and you're confident in what you're doing. And so I'm getting on a tangent, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope I was able to help you out. Even if it was just a little bit, drop a comment and let me know what you think. I appreciate all you guys who consistently send me emails and reach out and send me messages. It means a lot. Your support is, is crazy and, and I just, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Until next time, I'll see you.